to see each other. As we see each other in public, we can identify each other as Christian brothers and sisters. You know, um, like I said, it's not to compel, but I'll suggest if we all can show our faces and, you know, and that would really help. Uh, thank you, everyone. God bless you. Um, for some reason, if you are driving, if you can't show your face, that's fine. But I really advise, you know, so that people can see us, you know, if you can show your face, please show your face without any distraction. Thank you. Just now, over to you. Okay, man. Um, first off, thank you, Vertao, for this opportunity to speak. I do not take it for granted. Um, let's just start by praying. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you for another time in your presence, another time to pray together, to share the word together. We know by your word, your word says, where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. So Lord, we just want to thank you for already being in our midst. I ask, oh Lord, that you overshadow me with your glory and your presence and that you speak through me. I pray that through this short time that we have together, Lord, that lives will be transformed, souls will be revived, um, fires will be rekindled in the name of Jesus. I pray that your word will settle in each and every single one of our hearts and it will do a new thing in each and every single one of our lives. For in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the topic that was given to me to speak on um, is the power of dedication and commitment the power of dedication and commitment. So I'm just going to outline how I'm going to go through this real quick so y'all can follow along. So I'm just going to start by defining what dedication and commitment is. Then I'm going to give you some people in the Bible who exemplify dedication and commitment. And then we are going to pray. So just giving you an outline so you can follow along with me. So once again, the topic is the power of dedication and commitment. So I'm going to define dedication. These are um, de uh, definitions that I got off of Google search through Merriam-Webster and this other dictionary. So I have three definitions for dedication and three definitions for commitment. So dedication can be defined as a devoting or setting aside for a particular purpose, two, self-sacrificing devotion and loyalty, or three, the willingness to give a lot of time and energy to something because it is important. I'm going to run through that again. Dedication can be defined as a devoting or setting aside for a particular purpose, self-sacrificing devotion and loyalty. Three, the willingness to give a lot of time and energy to something because it is important. On to commitment. Commitment can be defined as a promise or a firm decision to do something, two, an agreement or pledge to do something in the future, or three, the act of binding yourself intellectually or emotionally to a course of action. I'm gonna run through that again. Commitment can be defined as a promise or firm decision to do something, two, an agreement or pledge to do something in the future, or three, the act of binding yourself intellectually or emotionally to a course of action. So I like to um, give definitions of things just so we can have better understanding of what it is that we are talking about. So now I'm gonna go through a couple of people in the Bible who I believe exemplified dedication and commitment. So the first person, and y'all don't have to worry about reading anything. I'm gonna read all the, the passages of scripture that I have laid out here. Um, so the first person that I have is Jacob. And we are going to read Genesis chapter 32, verse number 22 to verse number 28. And I'm going to read in the, the King James Version. So Genesis 32, verse number 22 to verse number 28. And it says, and he rose up that night and took his two. This is Jacob that they're talking about. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his 11 sons and passed over the four Jabbok, 23. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone. And there he wrestled with the man until the breaking of the day, 25. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. 
And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob, verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, with men, and hast prevailed. The key verse that I want us to look at is verse number 26. It says, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, Jacob said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. So really quickly, before I dive into it, we're going to do a bit of exegesis and go to Hosea chapter 12, which um, outlines the same story. But there's something I want us to see in Hosea chapter 12, verse number three to four. Hosea was a prophet of God. This is the prophet that um, the Lord told to marry a prostitute, if you're unfamiliar with who Hosea is. Let me just get there real quick. Sorry, I'm using my physical Bible. All right. So Hosea chapter 12, verse three to four. So this is basically Hosea telling the same story that I just told y'all that happened um, in Genesis chapter 32. It says he took his brother. He's talking about Jacob here. He says he took his brother by the heel in the womb and by his strength, he had power with God. Verse number four, it said, yea, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him, and he found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. So I'm going to read that verse, um, verse four in the Amplified Version, because there's something I want us to see there really quickly. So in the Amplified Version, is it the Amplified Version? Actually, it's verse three. I'm sorry. Yes. In the Amplified Version for verse number three of Hosea chapter 12, it says, in their mother's womb, he took his brother by the heel and in his maturity, he contended with God. And that is what I want us to see there. It says in his maturity, he contended with God, meaning there was a certain level he got to that he was able to contend with God. There was a certain phase of his life that he was, that he, a certain strength that he had, that he had the capacity to contend with God. You know, a lot of us are fighting battles that we don't even have the strength to fight. And that can be through sin, or maybe we went ahead of God because oftentimes when we go ahead of God, we don't have the strength that is needed for where we were supposed to go. So now we're over here crying to God, like, God, help me. All this, when we could have stayed in the season that we were, we were at, built the capacity to have the strength for the next season. So I just want us to take that with us. In his maturity, he contended with God. There has to be a certain level that you must reach in your spiritual life. And just as an example of a person who I believe reached a certain level um, with God that was able to um, go back and forth. If you don't know what contend means, I mean, contend basically means to go effort for effort, blow for blow, to go like back and forth. That's what it means to contend, right? So an example of someone I can say in the Bible that was able to be mature with God, to be able to stand with God and contend with God or negotiate with God is Abraham. And we see that in Genesis chapter 13, I believe, when he's negotiating with God about sparing the people's lives in Sodom, right? And he's like, if there be 50 people, and God's like, okay, if there be uh, 40, 35, all the way down to 10. And I had to ask myself, if Abraham wasn't a person who God trusted or who God favored, would he be able to go back and forth with God like that? So just remembering that point in his maturity, in his maturity, why did I say maturity? In his maturity, he was able to contend with God. So make sure in whatever season you are in in your life, make sure you build the capacity, build the strength to go ahead. You know, the, the don't neglect the process. That's basically what, because in the process is where you build your character, is where you you build your strength. So connecting it back to Jacob, right? Jacob was able to travail. 
And I want to pose the question to us, how many of us are willing to travail? How many of us are willing to keep going? The angel of the Lord touched his thigh and his thigh was basically dislocated, but he still kept going, right? The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 66, I believe verse number eight, it says, as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children, meaning she had to keep pushing. She had to keep going in order to bring something out, right? Jacob was still willing to go. So how do we connect this to dedication? How do we connect this to um, commitment? So if we go back to the, my definitions of dedication, right? Dedication, the third definition of dedication that I have, it says the willingness to give a lot of time, a lot of time. We see that Jacob wrestled with the angel until daybreak. He spent all that time. He spent all night fighting to get what he wanted. It also says the willingness to give a lot of energy his thigh was basically dislocated. So we can rightfully assume that he had to exhort a lot more energy to keep tussling, to keep struggling, right? So he gave a lot of time, fought until daybreak. He gave a lot of energy. His thigh is dislocated, but he keeps going, right? To get what he wanted. How is he committed? So for commitment, the definition that I have here, the third definition that I have here is the act of binding yourself intellectually or emotionally to a course of action. He said, I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I'm holding on until I get what I need. I'm holding on till I get that blessing. A lot of us feel pain and want to give up. A lot of us feel pain and want to throw in the towel. A lot of us feel pain and want to turn around. This guy's thigh was dislocated and he said, no, I'm getting what I want. You have to be willing to travail. You have to be determined and you have to be committed. So moving on to the next couple of people that I have. Let me look at my time. Okay, cool. So the next um, example of people that I have is Cedric, Meshik, and Abednego. Um, and we are going to read Daniel chapter 3, verse number 14 to 18. Daniel chapter 3, verse number 14 to 18. Um, very popular passage of scripture. This is when King Nebuchadnezzar had made a golden image and wanted people to bow down to this image. Um, so Daniel chapter 3, verse number 18 to, I mean, verse number 14 to 18. And I'm going to read it again in the King James Version. Sorry, I'm trying to get my desk. And it says, Nebuchadnezzar spake, un spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, Ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Verse number 16, Sadric, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. 17, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery fairness, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. 18, but if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So the key verses, the key verses that I have for this are 16 to 18. And I'm going to read this in the amplified version. Let me just pull it up in my phone. So in the amplified version, it says, Sajik, Meshik, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to answer you on this point. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to rescue us from the furnace of a blazing, of blazing fire, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. They said, we do not need to answer you on this point. 
In the NLT version, it translates to, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. Some of us are so ready to defend ourselves. Some of us are so ready to prove ourselves. And God is just waiting for you to hop into fire so he can prove that he is God in this situation, right? In Isaiah chapter 50, verse number seven to nine, and I'm going to read that. Isaiah chapter 50, verse number seven to verse number nine. Give me one second, because I also want to pull it up on my phone. Isaiah chapter 50, verse number seven to verse number nine. It says, for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, shall I not be confounded. Therefore, I've set my face like a flint, a flint, and I know that I will not be ashamed. This is my verse. And every verse number eight, every time I read verse number eight, it like unlocks a new level of confidence for me. It says, he is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Verse number nine, behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax, wax as cold as garment. The moth shall eat them up. Verse number eight in the amplified version, it says, he who declares me right is near. Who will dare to contend with me. Let us stand up to each other. Who is my adversary? Let him approach me. Basically that verse is saying like, who is my enemy? Come, let me show you who my God is. You have a problem with me? Let me show you what my God can do. This is the level of confidence that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. They basically said, I don't care about your image. I know the God that I serve. And because I know of his capability, I'm going to stand strong. I'm going to stand confident on the truth of his word. Nothing you say to me is going to shake me. Nothing you shake Nothing you say to me is going to make me turn around. Nothing you say to me is going to cause me to bow down. Everything that is caused that wants me to bow down will bow down to my God. That is basically the level of confidence that they had, the determination that they had, the commitment that they had to the Lord. But this level of confidence is only built by the revelation of who you know God to be. As whoever you know God to be, right? When you find God is when you find yourself right? And revelation comes from transformation, right? In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 18, I'm paraphrasing here. It says, as we behold as in a mirror, right? The glory of the Lord. We are transformed into the image of Jesus going from glory to glory. I'm paraphrasing here, but it's something like that. It's 2 Corinthians 3, 18. So as I behold, as I focus, as I stay committed, as I stay the course, as I follow Jesus, I'm going to be transformed. And why does this transformation have to take place? So I was reading Genesis all over again. Genesis chapter one, verse number 27. It says, and he created them in the image of God, right? Male and female, he created them. So we are already made in the image of God. So then I asked God, I was like, so why is second Corinthians telling us we have to then be transformed into the image of God? And then the Holy Spirit helped me to realize that in Genesis chapter one, they were made in the image of God. But in Genesis chapter three, sin came and distorted that image. So now we have to do the work to transform ourselves, to come back made into that image. When sin comes, it corrupts the heart, it corrupts the mind, it corrupts the spirit. Now you no longer look like Jesus, you look like the world. So now you need to focus on the word. You need to behold the word. I need to fix my eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith, so that I can be transformed from glory to glory. Romans chapter 12, verse number two, it says the renewal of my mind, meaning my mind is naturally in a carnal state, meaning I have to consistently go into to the word to transform my mind back to way the to the way that the Lord wants me to be right in Psalms chapter one verse two it says in his law doth he meditate day and night day and night day and night day and night he meditated in first Thessalonians five verse seventeen it says pray without season there has to be a consistency I was listening to um Minister Dunson he does this um hour of of uh, praying in the spirit. And one of the things that he constantly kept saying, he said, consistency breaks any opposition. 
Consistency breaks any opposition. If I can be consistent in my word, if I can be consistent in my prayer life, I leave no room for the devil to come in, no room for the devil to, to come into any crack. I'm building a fortitude. I'm building a defense that he cannot come through. So I need to be consistent in my prayer life. I need to be consistent in my word that the devil can look at me and know, oh, I can't mess with her. It's consistency. Because you notice the day that you start falling back, the day that you start falling asleep, the enemy comes in little by little. And, and it's so funny because at first it'll just feel like, okay, I don't want to pray today. I don't want to pray today. I don't want to get in my word. I'm tired today. Then tomorrow, oh, now I want to watch this show. Then the next day, oh, um, my partner's calling me. Then the next day, something at work happened. It just comes in little by little. And over time, you see how your, your image is being distorted back to that image that is not of Christ. So stay consistent in the word. Behold, behold, as I behold, as I fix my eyes, I'm transformed. So the next person that I have is one of my favorite people in the Bible, and that is Apostle Paul. Now, Apostle Paul has so many examples. Oh, just so I can um, go back to my definition, because I want to make sure that we're, we're getting the determination and the commitment. So we can see that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Ab Abednego exemplify um, dedication based off my second definition. The second definition I have is self-sacrificing devotion and loyalty. They were so loyal to God, they were willing to sacrifice themselves for the sake of God, for the name of God. They were committed because my first definition of commitment, it says a promise or firm decision to do something. They're standing on their word, the word of God. They're making that firm decision. Like, I don't care what you say. I'm not bowing down. So that's just to, to tie it back to the dedication and commitment. So going to Apostle Paul, we are going to read Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse number 23 to 26. Acts 16, 23 to 26. And this is also in the King James Version. Actually, let me read it in the NOT Version. I'm going to read it in the NOT Version. Do I have my Bible? Okay. I'll read my NOT Bible. Sorry, y'all. So Acts chapter 16, verse number 23 to 26, and I'm reading it in the NLT version. And this is a popular story as well. It says they were severe. This is Paul and Silas, by the way. They were severely beaten and then thrown into prison. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape, 24. So the jailer put them into the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in the stocks, 25, around midnight. Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. 26. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner flew, flew off. So we see the dedication and commitment in Paul and Silas, because even though they were bound, even though they were beaten, they were still praying. They were still singing to God. If this was many of us today, instead of praying till midnight, we would be crying till midnight. So you can imagine the, the, the level of determination each of them had. And you see this in Apostle Paul consistently. And like I said, there's so many examples of Apostle Paul being determined and committed. But I just wanted to highlight this. Like He is like, I know what God has called me to do. And even if you beat me, even if I'm shipwrecked, even if you, you keep me bound, I'm going to preach this gospel. I will die preaching this gospel. I don't care whatsoever comes my way. I am determined to do his will. He saved me. He turned my life around. I was persecuting his people. I was killing his people. And he had mercy on my soul. And because of that, I'm fixing my eyes on Jesus. I don't care what you say about my God. I don't care if you tie me down. I don't care if you beat me. I don't care if a snake comes to bite me. I don't care if I end up shipwrecked. I'm going to preach this gospel. And we also are going to see this in, um, also, thank you, Holy Spirit. Another thing I want to want to highlight here is in verse number 26. I'm going to read it. It says, suddenly there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation. 
all the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The chains of every prisoner fell off. Your dedication and commitment to God, to your assignment, to the will of God can free other people. I always say this, Christianity is personal, but it's not about you. I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, especially in this day and age, you know. It is not about you. We had a gathering of the eagles. It was either awake or rise, whichever one that was. You know, well, I said, like, people are waiting for you to rise up. People are waiting for you to take action. People are waiting for you to do what God has called them to do, right? This journey, although your relationship with God is personal, I encourage you, know God for yourself. It is not about you. It's about those coming up behind you. What will the generation coming up behind you have to say about you? Will they say, yes, I know this sister. I know this brother. Anytime it comes about God, they speak so confidently. No shaking. They don't back down. They don't give up. Or will they say in the day of adversity, adversary, they failed, right? You know, so your commitment and dedication, it's not about you. It's about those that are coming up behind you, right? We want to be the example for those that are coming up behind us. So another example of Apostle Paul is in Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verse number 7 to 12. Acts chapter 20, verse number 7 to 12. Yes, thank you, adversity. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, my tongue was tied. Um, <laughs> Acts chapter 20, verse number 7 to 12. And I'm going to read this in the King James Version. Um, so this, this story, sorry, I'm like all over the place. So this story, um, although not as trivial as getting beaten and being put in jail, it still in my eyes shows determination of Apostle Paul. This is, a uh, um, also a well-known story, but I'm going to read it. It's verse number seven to 12 in Acts chapter number 20. It says, and this is in King James, it says, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow. So he was ready to leave tomorrow and he was preaching to them. And he continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper cha chamber where they gathered together. Verse number nine. And there sat in a window, a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep. And fell down from the third lot and was taken up dead. The verse number 10, excuse me. And Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him, saying, Trouble not yourselves, for his life for his life is in him. When verse number eleven, when he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. Verse number twelve, and they brought the young man alive, and they were not little. And they were not a little comforted. So I know, like I said, it's not as trivial as getting beaten. But you can see the de determination in Paul. He's like, okay, I only got a day with y'all, right? And I know it's midnight. So I'm going to download as much as I can. My assignment is to preach to y'all. So I'm going to do just that. So much so that even death did not bother him, right? Death really had no power over whatever he was going to preach. He was like, okay, come on, boy, wake up. Let's go. I still have something to do. I still have something to preach to these people, right? He literally just embraced the boy and said, he's alive. All right. And then continued back to his assignment, continued back to what God has called him to do. So here we see that, that determination of Paul and to con confirm the determination of Paul, I'm going to read one of my favorite verses, um, Acts chapter 20, verse 24. And I'm going to read it actually in the Amplified Version. This is a verse that I, I I like try to commit to memory because I literally want to exemplify this verse, especially with, you know, what God has called me to do. So Acts chapter 20, verse number 24. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. Give me a moment. Okay. So this just confirms the determination of Apostle Paul um, and his willingness to be committed and dedicated to the assignment that God has put on his life. It says, but I do not consider my life as something of value or dear to me, 
so that I may with joy finish my course and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify faithfully of the good news of God's precious and undeserved grace, which makes us all free of the guilt and sin and grants us eternal life. And I'm going to read it in King James as well. He says, but none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and ministry, which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God, right? He says, finish the course. And what is one of the definitions of commitment? It says the action of binding yourself to a course of action, right? He was committed to do the will of God. He said, but I consider my life nothing. My life is worth nothing unless I'm preaching the gospel of Christ. My life means nothing unless I'm finishing this assignment that God has called me to do. My life means nothing unless I am preaching the message of salvation. My life means nothing unless I am preaching this gospel. He was committed. He was dedicated. And another person, I can't talk about dedication or commitment without talking about the person who gave his life up for us. And that is Jesus Christ. And we're going to read Luke chapter 22, verse number 41 to 45. Luke 22, 41 to 45. Let me see my time. 1040, cool. Luke 22, 41 to 45. Forty-one to forty-five. Verse number forty-one says, "And he was withdrawn from them about from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed." Forty-two, saying, "Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done." Forty-three, and there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Forty-four, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was was, as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground and 45 and he arose and he rose up from from prayer and was come to his disciples he found them sleeping for sorrow so we see the dedication and commitment with Jesus he's dedicated to so there's two things actually we can take from here from 41 we see his dedication and commitment to the will of God right he says it outrightly he says not my will but thine be done. And here we see the humanity of Jesus, right? <laughs> this, this is a lot for him to take on. But despite that, he's saying, God, not my will, but yours be done. We bring it back to Jacob, right? Despite his thigh being dislocated, he said, I'm going to get what's mine. Jesus, despite this suffering, he said, no, I'm going to do your will. So you have to get to a point like, God, despite me losing my job, I'm going to do your will. Despite my account being a negative zero, I'm going to do your will. Despite these people leaving me, I'm going to do your will. It is harder to do than to say. I would say that right now, I'm in a season of my life that has been the most challenging for me. And this is just me being transparent. Um, I feel like I'm at a point where it's like, you know, we read these scriptures, even Bertaro mentioned the scripture when he was praying before, right? And I was sharing this with Bertaro too, like, he says, call on me in the days of trouble, and I'll answer thee, and I'm calling, and I ain't getting no answer, <laughs> you know? Seek me, and you will find me, I'm seeking, and I ain't seeing nothing. You know, and it's so hard. I literally, I have a journal, and I encourage you guys to write and document and I, I literally was writing to God. I If you see my journal, I literally, in capital letters, I said, it's so hard right now. But at the end of it, I said, God, I'm going to trust you. Like, it's like, I don't doubt the nature of God. I know he can do it. It's just like, why are you not doing it for me? And I know a lot of us get in those positions where it's like, you see God blessing others and, and doing all this. And it's just like, God, like, I'm over here on my last leg preaching this gospel. <laughs> where's mine you know but you gotta stay the course and I, I know that for me this is just the Holy Spirit calling me deeper to go deeper with him there's more that he wants us it is hard I'm not gonna lie to you it, if Jesus can say God remove this cup of suffering you know it's gonna be a challenge 
to be determined. It's going to be a challenge to stay committed, but you just have to, like I said in the beginning, fix your eyes on Jesus. Stay the course, right? Another um, example of Jesus, right? In this same Luke chapter 22 and verse 45, it says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Even though he's in pain, he kept going. Jacob was in pain, but he kept going. Like I said earlier, a lot of us get feel a little ounce of pain. We get a little shaken up and we turn back. We give up. We start doubting God. In his agony, he kept going, right? You have to make a decision that and say, God, this is hard right now. Like, be honest with God. He's your father. Be honest, but say, God, this is challenging for me right now. I've been calling you for eight months about this job. And nothing is happening, but I'm going to trust you because I know you're preparing something great for me. God, I've been calling on you for a year or two about my husband, about my wife, but no one is showing up. But God, I'm going to still trust you. God, I've been calling on you about my finances, right? But I'm going to still trust you. You have to be determined to stay the course no matter what is going on in my life. I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. The moment we take our eyes off Jesus is the moment we begin to sink. We see that with Peter, right? When Peter was fixing his eyes on Jesus, he was able to walk on water. The moment he focused on the storm, the moment he focused on, on, on the wind, he began to sink, right? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Stay the course, stay determined. So now I hope you guys got something from what I said and looked at the... um the different examples of the people that I that I um that I mentioned and I hope it encouraged you in some way or another you know that you drew something so now we're just gonna pray I have about let me see the time sorry y'all okay so we're gonna pray I have about seven prayer points that we're gonna pray concerning this determination and this commitment so if you are willing you could also unmute so we could all hear ourselves pray and pray together if you are you don't have to um so we're going to pray the first prayer that, Lord, no matter what comes my way, help me to say the chorus. Psalms 27 verse 3. Is it verse 3? It says, though a host should encamp against me, I shall not fear. Though war should rise up against me, in this I will be confident. That is saying, like, no matter what comes my way, I am determined. I'm going to stay confident in the Lord. So we're going to pray, Lord, no matter what comes my way, help me to stay the course. Help me to stay committed. Prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord God, that no matter what comes my way in this life, no matter what storm rages, Father God, no matter what comes about me, Lord, help me to stay committed. Help me to stay the course. Help me to stay the course. Course. Help me to stay the course in the mighty name of Jesus. No matter what the enemy may throw my way, no matter what the enemy may throw to deter my path, Lord God, help me to stay the course. 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 Help me to be determined. Help me to be committed to your will. Help me to be committed to your will. No matter what comes my way, oh God, help me to stay the course. 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 No matter what the enemy throws in my path, Father God, help me to stay the course. Help me to stay the course. Help me to stay the course. Help me to be committed. Help me to be determined, oh God. Help me to stay the course, oh God. Help me to stay the course, oh God. Help me to stay the course, to stay the course, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The next prayer that I have, we're going to pray, Lord, if I have strayed away from my place of assignment due to sin or Due to um, spiritual slumber, Lord, reroute me back. Take me back. Take me back to my place of assignment. This is a prayer of, of mercy, you know. So, Lord, if I have strayed away from my place of assignment due to sin or, or spiritual slumber, reroute me back. Reroute me back. Prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray, dear God, if I have strayed away from my place of assignment, if I have strayed away from your from your plan for my life, oh God, due to sin or to, 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 to spiritual slumber, Lord, reroute me back. Turn me back, turn me back, turn me back to my place of assignment, oh God. Turn me back to my place of assignment, oh God. Turn me back to my place of assignment, oh God. Turn me back to my place of assignment, oh God. Turn me back to my place of assignment, oh God. Turn me back to my place of assignment, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord my God, if I have strayed away from my place of assignment due to sin, due to disobedience, due to delay, due to spiritual slumber, Lord, turn me back, turn me 
back, turn me back, turn me back, turn me back, turn me back, turn me back, turn me back, turn me back, turn me back. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, if I have strayed away from my purpose, if I have strayed away from your plan for my life, if I have strayed away, oh God, from my place of assignment, turn me back, oh God, 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 turn me back, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to pray this simple prayer. Lord, help me to be consistent to my devotion to you. We talked about consistency, that if I stay consistent to his word, that it, it um, what did I say? Consistency breaks any opposition. So Lord, help me to stay consistent in my devotion to you. Prayer in Jesus name. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I pray, oh God, that you help me, oh God, to stay consistent in my devotion to you, oh God. Help me to stay consistent, oh God, in my devotion to you. Help me to stay consistent in your word. Help me to stay consistent in the place of prayer, dear God. Help me to stay consistent. Help me to stay consistent. Help me to stay consistent. Help me to stay consistent, oh God, in the place of prayer. Help me to stay consistent in your word in the name of jesus help me to stay consistent help me to stay consistent help me to be totally devoted to you help me to be totally committed to you help me to stay consistent in the place of prayer help me to stay consistent in my fellowship with you oh god help me to stay consistent oh god in the word help me to stay consistent 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 oh god in Jesus' name we pray Amen. Amen. This is stemming from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're going to pray, even when others around me are not willing, give me the confidence to stand on the truth of your word, O oh God. Prayer in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, even if others around me are not willing, give me the confidence confidence, oh God, to stand on the truth of your word, to stand boldly on the truth of your word, to stand boldly on the truth of your word, to stand boldly on the truth of your word. Father God, even if those around me, oh God, even if those around me are not willing, help me to stand boldly, to stand confidently, oh God, on the truth of your word, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus, even if those around me, oh God, are not willing, Lord, help me to stand confidently, help me to stand confidently, Help me to stand confidently. Help me to stand confidently. Help me to stand confidently. Help me to stand confidently on the truth of your word, O oh God. On the truth of your word, O oh God. On the truth of your word, O oh God. Help me to stand confidently, O oh God. On the truth of your word. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to pray, Lord, remind me in the times where I want to throw in the towel, in the times where I want to give up, that there are others waiting for me to rise. Prayer in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, dear God, that in the times that I want to give up, in the times that I want to throw in the towel, in the times that I want to turn back, remind me, oh God, that there are others waiting on me to rise, that there are others depending on me to rise, that there are others waiting on me to be committed, to be devoted, to be determined to do your will, oh God, in the name name of Jesus. Father God, in times when I want to throw in the towel, in times when it gets hard, in times when it gets challenging, in times when I want to give up, help me to stay the course. Remind me, oh God, that there are others waiting on me to rise. There are others depending on me to rise. There are others waiting on me to wake up, oh God. There are others waiting on me to be consistent. There are others waiting on, my, on me to stay the course. There are others waiting on me to be committed. There are others waiting on me to be determined, oh God. Help me, oh God. Remind me, oh God, of those that are coming up behind me, of those that are following behind me. Help me, oh God, to be determined. 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 In Jesus' name, we're going to pray Amen. that, Lord, increase my strength for what's ahead. In Proverbs 24, verse 10, like I said, it said, if your strength fails, I mean, if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Meaning that if I had if I had went again to God, I didn't build the I didn't build the capacity for what is ahead. I didn't build the strength for what it is what is ahead. So we're gonna pray, Lord, increase my strength for what is ahead. Increase my capacity for what is ahead. Prayer in Jesus' name, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, increase my capacity for what is ahead. Increase my strength for what is ahead. Increase my strength, O God. Increase my strength, O God. Increase my strength, O God. Increase my strength, O God, for what is ahead. In the mighty name of Jesus, increase. Increase my strength, O oh God, for what is ahead. Increase my strength, O oh God, for what is ahead. Increase my strength, O oh God, for what is ahead. Increase my strength. Increase my strength. Increase my strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lastly, we're going to pray this prayer like Jesus prayed. Let your will be done in my, in my life. Now, this prayer is easy to say, 
but it's harder to accept sometimes. Sometimes God's will for your life is not what you have planned, right? Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, we make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. So when you pray, pray this prayer, you have to be ready to do God's will. You have to be ready to forsake your own desires. You have to be ready to be okay that it might not turn out how you want it to be. So we're going to pray, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Let your will be done in my life. Prayer in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord, my God, I pray that let your will be done in my life, Lord. Let your will be done in my life, Lord. Let your will be perfected in my life. Let your will be done, oh God. 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 Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Over to you, Brett Tywell. Thank you so much. I want us to quickly pray for our sister. That Lord, replenish our strength. Replenish our God. Anoint our fresh with fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God. Lord, we make a demand of God. Replenish our strength. 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 Strengthen our more. Strengthen our more. Strengthen our more. Strengthen our more. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, brethren. Please, I encourage you. Um, I'm going to trust that this video will be ready on YouTube tonight. I'll try to talk to my wife. Hopefully, she has the time to get it ready. If not, it will be ready tomorrow. But please, I want you to go and listen to these videos again. You know, um, the Bible says, Romans 10, 17. You say, faith comment by hearing and hearing again by the word of God. You see, everything she has said tonight, you have, she has said more or much more than you have heard. But you wouldn't know until you listen again. So what am I trying to say? I'm not advocating because she ministered. Even all the videos from this platform, I would suggest you can check them out on YouTube listen over and over for those that know me when i go to the gym or i'm even at home i listen to preaching over and over i'm telling you you need the word of god you see everything she said tonight about dedication and commitment if you are not a person who is making deliberate decision to feed your mind with the word of god it will be very hard for you to be committed to God. You can only be committed to a person you know. You can't be committed to a person you don't know. So it takes identity. It takes revelation. It takes, there was something. You see, when she read from that book of um, Ghana chapter 3, while she was reading that chapter, Holy Spirit said, even though it wasn't disclosed that these guys, they saw God face to face, but by a revelation for them to say that even if our God that we know, that we will not bow, but our God whom we know will save us. Let's quickly go back to that and I just want to quickly establish something. Daniel chapter 3 and we close. Let me use King James. It was verse 17 or so. Okay, verse 17 says, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. 
these guys were extremely confident that even though we live in Babylonia, the, the lifestyle here is completely different. But there is a God whom they are so confident of who their allegiance was to. Brethren, all I'm saying is, please, I'm begging you, we are in the end time. There's so much program into this year. Don't allow anything catch you unaware. Don't allow anything catch you unprepared. Spend time with the word of God. You just, you just add our own testimony, what she's going through right now in our own season. Guess what? Your own season too is coming. <laughs> it's coming for everybody. Everybody will have his own share. The question is, you see, she is standing on what she has found in the word of God. To stand on God's word. The question is, when your own season comes, what will you stand on? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I will say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us tonight. Lord, as we go to bed tonight, encounter us. Visit us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just wanted to say this. One, I want to thank everyone. Those that officiated from this platform, the Garden of the Eagles, may the Lord continue to reward you. For those that came in person, may the Lord continue to bless you. Those that watch from home, may the Lord continue to bless you. Um, please, if you know that this prayer network has had an impact in your life, you have a testimony, please, I really want you to message me or you know, give me a thumbs up, give me a sign, message me so that we can designate a day for you to share your testimony. Because some people reach out to me one-on-one -on, -one on WhatsApp and they want to know, oh, brother, when can we share a testimony? You said something like this early this year, but you never said anything anymore. Please, if you know that this platform has had an impact in your life for the past one year and you want to let people know, you know, just let me know as well. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow, same time, 10 p.m. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sister Oye. God bless you.